The world is going through turbulent times. Many things are changing. Europe is trying to find answers and solutions, including how to make Europe's industry fit for the future. As part of these efforts, a European competitiveness compass and the clean industrial deal have been proposed. At the heart of our sector is the EU bioeconomy strategy, due to be published at the end of the year. This is an exciting opportunity, an opportunity not to be missed. I have with me here today Rob Bakers. He is here today to talk about biomanufacturing. Thanks for having me here, Marco. Rob, imagine you meet the EU Commission President von der Leyen in the elevator. What would be your pitch about biomanufacturing in Europe? Well, I hope it's a tall building and I hope the elevator goes slow because then I have some time for the pitch. But I would say, uh, Mrs. Van der Leyen, imagine a time in future where everyday products that you use like cosmetics, home care, packaging materials, but even your clothing would no longer be made from petrochemicals, but we could make them from sustainably sourced biomass here in Europe. Well, we have a real opportunity to bring that day closer to the reality of today, because the biomanufacturing industry is growing into the tens of trillions of dollars in the coming years. And actually, Europe has quite good papers to be a leader in this space. But when we look at the reality, it's a bit different. Most of the larger investments today are happening in the North Americas and more and more also in China. And so the bioeconomy is about competitiveness, it's about uh, strategic autonomy, and it's about sustainability. And we need to create our own destination here in Europe, made in Europe. Um, we have I think interesting opportunities because in the US they're moving now with a new administration to drill baby drill. And I think this is a unique opportunity for Europe to retain but also to attract the most promising biotechnologies and biomanufacturing companies to Europe. Um, actually, I think under your leadership we have the chance to make Europe the world's first continent of having a true circular bioeconomy. And that will bring new jobs, it will revitalize areas, and um, uh, it will reduce our dependency on imports. So, Mrs. van der Leyen, it's not a question if the bioeconomy will be large, but the question is if Europe will lead it. And I think with your support, we will. Why does it need support? We have a lot of it here already, but, but I would say there are a couple of things that could really accelerate um, the business here and um, there's the funding, there's the biomass and there's the market demand. Let me start with the funding because companies in biomanufacturing actually face two valleys of that. One it is when they develop R&D, prototyping and secondly when they have to scale up because the assets are generally not there, it's very capital intensive. The, um, challenges we face in getting capital to the market is that if we look at the public-private partnership that we have, Circular Biobase Europe Joint Undertaking, this is flowing funding and money there. But it's, and we for sure need to keep that. But it's not enough. We need to attract other capital to Europe from investment banks, from private equity firms, maybe even from pension funds. And today they consider the bioeconomy as a quite risky space. Actually, they have alternatives. They could inf invest in defense, they could invest in high tech. And um, the bioeconomy has more risks. In Europe, it needs to have a little bit more risk because of the regulatory hurdles. It takes a bit longer time to develop our products here compared to the rest. And that is uh, pushing some investments off. We need to change that. And I think an institute like the European Investment Bank could pave the way here for attracting more capital to Europe in the bioeconomy. That would really make a change. And secondly, there is biomass. Today, more than 90% of all the chemicals we use in our products today are petrochemicals. That cannot sustain. We need to change that. And if we bring up the topic of biomass, a lot of people will say, but don't touch chemicals because biomass is just a drop in the ocean to solve the chemical problem. Well, 
We've recently done and completed a study as BIC on the future supply and demand of biomass, not only in materials but also in food, feed and even in fuels. And the main conclusion from that study is that there is a large untapped amount of biomass available that is waiting and sitting there to be used in materials. And if we look at the size of that, it's not a drop in the ocean. More than 20% of the future demand on chemicals could be made from biomass from renewable feedstocks. That is a major change. So we need to unlock that biomass and we need to stimulate the use of that here in Europe. And the third one, and I think it's even the most important one, is, is market demand. There is some demand for bio-based products in Europe, but it's mainly in the smaller products, in the high-end high -end, uh, consumer goods. If we look at everyday products, it's really petrochemicals that is the, the, the name of the game. So, why is that? Um, I think most of the most, one of the most important reasons for that is price. So, although consumers are more conscious about sustainability, when they're on the shelf and they have the choice between two products, they generally take the cheaper one. And we've seen that also with, uh, with bioenergy and biofuels, the demand only accelerated the moment mandates and incentives became in place. And we need a kind of a level playing field also in that immaterial. So without such mandates and incentives, it's very difficult to reach the larger mass markets of products with, with biomaterials. And it will be very difficult to attract investors to really spend money to build assets in biomanufacturing here in Europe. You also said Europe has the potential to be a leader in biomanufacturing. What makes you think this? Well, I, I think we're demonstrating that in our public-private partnership with, the, with uh, the European Commission called Circular Biobased Europe Joint Undertaking. The advancements in technologies during the past 10-15 years have really been impressive. We've initiated more than 200 projects. The amount of capital that went into this was into the billions. For every one euro that was spent with public money, the private sector invested at least three times that amount. So the public-private partnership is a big success. And even if we look at our own consortium, the Biobased Industries Consortium, we've grown from 30 companies in 2013 now to over 350 today. So that means there is really an appetite. I think the second important thing why Europe is that we have a very, very large market. There are more than 450 million people living here. And if we are successful in creating a single market with the same boundaries that are relevant in all the countries, this is going to be a very attractive place for investors. This is the place to be for biomanufacturing in the world, I would say. So, with all the reasons I gave, I'm very optimistic about the bioeconomy in Europe. With a little bit of political support to create the market uptake here, Europe will be the place to be for investing in biomanufacturing. And the opportunity for that is now. Uh, we have great companies, large ones, small ones, that are ready to scale up, waiting for demand. So we count on the European bioeconomy strategy, the new one, to include specific actions to stimulate that demand. Remember, the bioeconomy is about competitiveness, it's about strategic autonomy, and it's about sustainability. And it's up to all of us to unleash the potential of the bio-based raw materials in this market. We hope that the EU bioeconomy strategy will be big and bold, taking the European bioeconomy from niche to norm.